Good morning, YouTube. Uh, today I'll take you in the day in the life of a uh, computer science student. I'm currently senior studying computer science at the University of San Diego. So let's go through today and uh, check out what a daily typical schedule of a computer science student looks like. As you can see, today is not a sunny day in San Diego. It's a rainy day. All right, let's go. This is Russell Wilson says, Bronco, Denver Broncos, Denver Broncos. Let's ride. All right, it's uh, 8.57. Uh, just got here to the uh, Shiley Marco School of Engineering. That's the engineering building. So I usually have class until 10 o'clock, but I usually get here between 8 and 9 so that I can uh, snag a good parking. My knockoff air books. Experts. <laughs> Alright, so usually in the mornings I will um, do some studying or in this instance um, just do some technical coding uh, practice. So usually to get a job within the software industry, the, um, the interview will usually have a technical portion in which they will ask um, a technical question usually this question um, will have something to do with uh, manipulating data in a certain way to solve a problem um, so in this instance i am solving find the sec second maximum uh, number within a list a list is just a um, data structure which is used to store uh, values um, so in this instance it's a list of numbers or integers as is known in computer science. Um, your, the goal is to basically find the integer that is um, not the max number within the list, but the second max. Um, so again, this is just an easy um, technical coding question. Um, it's good just to go over these in terms of prepping for interviews. Um, so in this instance, I have um, created a, our, created a set, another variable called max. I'm just gonna loop through the initial list one time to grab the max number. And then by using that max number, I will loop through the list again um, and compare that max number with other numbers to basically identify the um, second maximum number within the list. Um, so, as you can see here, this is just me um, thinking it through the problem. Um, it's always good just to kind of think about what you're going to do um, in the problem. Um, these are also good ways of prepping so that when you get to the interview time, you'll know what to do. All right, so now I'm just gonna test my solution. Um, and as you can see, I didn't get it right the first time. So it's good, it's good to notice this when you're doing these preps for your technical coding interviews or just learning about algorithms in general. Um, there's, if you have an error, it's good just to go back um, and learn what you did wrong uh, because the amount of times that you get it right the first time are very small. So in computer science, you gotta learn from your mistakes and go on. Um, I had a computer science professor who once said, uh, if you have bugs in your code, that's a good opportunity because it means it's time to learn. Um, because as anyone knows who's um, coded before, or if you haven't coded before, when you get a bug, it's, it's a very hard time because you have to look for the bug and then figure out what you did wrong. But it's a good learning opportunity because from debugging, you learn more about how you code and how the code you write solves problems. So it took me a couple of minutes to actually 
figure out where the issue was in my code but as you can see here I was checking get an element every in the list every time against zero which was wrong I should have been checking against my max number um, but as you can see uh, like I said in the past once you have a bug it's an opportunity to learn and grow uh, within your programming experience all right guys just got back home gonna have me some lunch my uh, beautiful wife made me some lunch as you can see all right here's the lunch for today dumplings thank you my beautiful wife gonna do some studying with my daughter <laughs> um, but yeah this is just a break between uh, my morning classes and my evening classes so let's go so this is uh, my homework for today just working on a encryption lab so like I said I'm uh, senior doing a master's program it's a four plus one so I'm getting my master's while I earn my under uh, my bachelor's degree and my um, Masters is in cybersecurity, so um, this class I'm taking right now is on cryptography, and I, I'll break that down a little bit. The basic ideas and concepts of what I'm uh, learning in this class. So we're going to go over the basics for cryptography. So cryptography is just a way to secure lines of communication. So say if I had a friend whose name was Bob, and I wanted to send you, send Bob a message without anyone else knowing what that message, what was said in that message. Cryptography is a way of um, basically making sure that that message is secure when I send it to Bob and only me and Bob know what that message is. A basic cipher that we're going to use. So cipher is a way of encrypting or securing a message in cryptography. Um, we're going to demonstrate today is the Caesar cipher. So it's a basic um, cryptographic principle which has been used to secure communications. Uh, for many years, obviously, it's not uh, recommended to be used now because it can be easily broken, but just for teaching purposes, it gets the point across. So the basic idea is um, you have your message, which we re usually refer to as plain text or clear text. And basically, that means it's a message that can be read if you know the English language and can, are able to read and write in English. You would easily know that that spells hello. So in order for my message to be secure when I send it to Bob, I'll use a seizure cipher. So we have a key. In this instance, the key is three, which means I will move three letters for every letter in this message. So for instance, starting with H, I'll move three letters in the alphabet away from H. So one, two, three, I have K. Going to E, one, two, three, I have H. I have L, two L's, one, two, three, that's two O's, and then I have O, so one, one, two, three, so R. So this is the cipher text, K-H-O-O-R. So obviously, we've been able to secure our message by encrypting it, so the average day person, if they were to look at that, they would not know that that message meant hello. All they would see is the cipher text. So that's the difference there, cipher text and plain text. Now, in order to decrypt that message, Bob would just need to know what the key is. So once he has the key, a key of three, he would know from K to go back. So I'll say decrypt here. Bob would just need to from the K, go back three letters. So one, two, three, you have H. From K H, one, two, three, you have E. From L, or from O, one, two, three, you have L. And then do that again, you'll get L again. Then you go to R, one, two, three, and you get O. So that's just a basic overview of the Caesar cipher and how cryptography works and why it's important in order to secure messages today. Think about your passwords or your bank account information, your social security number. All of these things go through encryption so that if someone were ever to access that information, it'd be in cipher text, just adding another layer of security that they'd have to go through in order to hack into your accounts and things like that. 
So this is the importance of cryptography and the, just a simple example using the cipher, Caesar cipher. Uh, just got done doing laundry and I'm off to my evening class. Last class of the day. That's a wrap for today. Gotta go back home and do some homework now. But uh, that's it for, for tonight. Yes, sir. Another day, another dollar. Another day, actually, another day closer to graduation. <laughs> My law university, Diego. I just got back from school. I gotta do the laundry, though. Or else my wife's gonna beat me up. Nah, just joking. But uh, I'm also putting baby to sleep. So this is kind of just uh, um, duties that need to be get done. Aside from uh, programming and stuff like that. Um, gotta be able to take a break from coding and stuff because that stuff can be stressful I'm also whispering so I don't wake up my daughter so enjoy the montage My daughter kind of woke up, so I'm gonna feed her right now. This journey will be good because um, my wife is starting her first semester as a computer science student. Well, restarting. She started school a couple uh, years back uh, before the pandemic, but us getting married, things like that, kind of delayed her schooling. And then she worked part time while I was finishing up my schooling, so. Now that I'm graduating, she will be going back to school in computer science. And then I'm graduating with my last semester, this semester in computer science. So it'll be good. Be perspective of a senior as well as a freshman in college as a computer science student. So, yeah. Gotta make sure we feed her before we go to sleep or else we'll be hanging throughout the night. And we wouldn't want that. Oh, baby. Yeah. All right, YouTube, that is a wrap for today's uh, day in the life of a computer science student video. If you uh, want to see more content, computer science or STEM related, uh, let us know in the comments. We'd uh, be happy to share um, our knowledge as well as things we're learning within STEM related fields. Uh, again, this is me and my wife uh, in our journey in terms of STEM. Um, as I near the end of my journey in terms of schooling and enter into the workforce and then my wife's journey as she starts up um, again with her uh, first semester in computer science. So stay tuned for more episodes. Like, you can also subscribe if you like the content. If not, don't worry, it's all good. Shout out to uh, all my poly people out there trying to get into STEM. Um, and everyone else, minorities, uh, anyone interested in STEM, uh, shout out to you guys as well.
Anyways, take care. You guys are the real MVPs.